I'm Joe Fiorini, and I work at a company called DI up in Cleveland. And I do, um, I've been doing Ember for about a year. And we do, um, so I've been doing some Ember, Rails, Objective C, Ansible, <laughs> the past, just in the past month. So, jump around a lot, but. Let me just kill some stuff here. <coughs> don't know why I didn't think about this already. Sorry. Oh, if you don't have dash, you need to have dash. It's twenty bucks now. Good. <laughs> I'm glad I bought it when I when it was eight. <laughs> okay. So um, it sounds like it sounds like a lot of you have some Ember experience. I'm, since this is a small group, I'm going to be not as scared about asking people like questions. What what build tools have you guys been using so far? Like, what have you been using to build your Ember apps? I wrote my own and it sucks. Okay. <laughs> at least you're at least you're honest. Yeah. No, actually, someone else wrote it and then they left and then I had to maintain it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. So, uh, so we just wrote our own note. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay. Been using a lot of linemen for any mm -hmm. JavaScript project recently. You said you used Ember App Kit. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. I use uh, Topless with Ember, which is my own project, Skeleton for Brunch. Yeah. We also Asset Pipeline for Light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 said no one ever. <laughs> <laughs> also, like random grunt scripts a long mm -hmm. time ago, mm -hmm. you know, where there was just like ad hoc grunt stuff. Okay. We're using Ember Rails, and I'm mm -hmm. starting to play with this on my own time, so. Okay. Cool. <coughs> so, um, obviously, Ember CLI is a, is a build tool for Ember apps, um, and it is kind of a um, I don't know, replacement or alternative to, to all of those things. Um, so before I really get started and start getting into stuff, I'm just really curious, and this will to help me know if I've addressed everything, and just to just to know in general. Does do any of you guys have like burning questions that you want to that you things something that you came here tonight and you really want to find out? What's HTML <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a. Mm -hmm. And that's just like common widgets and things like that. So I'd be interested to know. And okay. Like I know there's some Bower support and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. touch on that great. Okay. I'm wondering about easy ways to set up like automated testing builds, <coughs> like you know, like how to get that proxying going, like for development versus testing, and maybe a, a way that's very palatable to people that are used to Rails. Okay. Well, see, I will say that I'm, um, we don't have an answer to that just yet. But um, but it's something that is. I mean, Bower is is well supported, but um, we don't really have an answer to that yet. Okay. So. Yeah. There will be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, testing. I I'll, I'll, I'll I can show a little bit with uh, with what we have for testing so far. Um, and there's more to come <laughs> on that. That's something we'll be working on next. Anyway. Mm -hmm. How you would structure this, like your Ember application using this with your API application, like if you're using Rails or, or something else, like mm -hmm. basically, yeah, how do you do that? Like two yeah. separate projects all together yeah. or what? Okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 I, I have an example that I can show, I think I can show. I haven't run it in a couple weeks against the newest, but I can at least show you how I have it structured. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this uh, and bring it back up near the end, and then we'll uh, see see what we have been answered. I will not answer this. <laughs> I can't even speak to that. But um, 
<clears throat> I'm I'm just as I'm just as uh, excited about it as you are. I want it. Um, so I guess I already kind of said this, but I work for DI in Cleveland, and um, and oh yeah yeah I'm sorry. Um, is that better? Okay. Um, I'll be giving this talk. Uh, just announced today that I'll be giving this talk at Wicked Good, the Wicked Good Ember Conf in Boston. Um, so if you guys are if you guys are into Ember and um, want a good conference to go to, that's going to be in June seventeenth, I believe. It's in June, sometime mid June. So um, the website, I believe, is wickedgoodember.com. So check that out. They've got some good some good stuff coming. Um, so. So basically, I'm going to kind of go through the. Um, I'm, I'm, this is going to be a very uh, code-heavy, very uh, interactive talk, um, and and uh, this is the first time I've given this. So if you have questions, if I say anything that that doesn't make sense or whatever, just this is a small enough group. You know, let's let's just converse because if there's anything in particular that that like you want me to go deeper on, let me know because. Um, this is this is probably the second time I think this has actually been talked about <laughs> in, in a in a user group. So um, <clears throat> so there really isn't even good patterns to go by yet for what exactly to say. So um, you guys are kind of guinea pigs here. Lucky you. Um, so first off, the the purpose of Ember CLI because uh, I think I think a lot of people that. Uh, kind of ask about that, um, <clears throat> and the the first question that I kind of ask myself is, what should a good build tool actually do for you? Um, and so here, these are some of the things that I think a good build tool should do. Um, so this is these are things that like Yeoman will do for you, or um, the asset pipeline does for you. Um, that you know, except for maybe the last one, but. Um, <laughs> A good build tool should do should do all of these things and basically should make your life easier. Um, but also, let's not forget that this is Ember, and Ember is very uh, convention driven to help you understand, the, to help you know where things belong, to help you make decisions as you're coding, to help you make decisions faster, so that you can um, so you don't have to sit there thinking about oh where where should I put this thing. Um, so what should an Ember build tool do for you beyond those things? Um, it should be ready to build out of the box. A big thing with Ember is being able to, you know, being able to do things right away, and not having to do a lot of setup. Um, it should it should enforce the same folder structure. It should you know it should basically it should give you the conventions to be able to follow best practices um, without having to without having to think about it too much. Um, and those are those. That's that's kind. Of, those are kind of the goals of Ember CLI, is to be a good build tool, but also to be a good Ember build tool. Um, <clears throat> and part of the way that it accomplishes that, so you know, following wanting to follow best practices, um, Ember CLI has adopted. Um, and if you've used Ember AppKit, you've seen this already. Um, ES6 modules, as as its way of organizing. So ES6 modules, we get rid of globals entirely. Which is interesting because if if you've done anyone who's done Ember knows right away that it's very very global heavy you know using the app module as a namespace um, Ember CLI completely does away with that and um, and everything is is its own local module to no two objects talk to each other directly unless they unless they actually um, explicitly import each other um, so. The, the way that it works, because since ES6 modules aren't supported anywhere yet, um, it, they actually compile down to AMD. So what you, what you actually end up with is they're AMD modules, they're AMD style modules, but they're, they're synchronously loaded. So you don't, you're not, it's not required JS where you know, you're going through your site and things are loading as you go. Everything loads in one file, but they're all AMD modules. And Ember CLI includes its own very small Excuse me, shim to to serve as an AMD loader, um, and Ember still works exactly as it always has. You can still you can still refer to you know you can still use relationships and models in Ember data. You can still um, refer to controllers and templates and all that stuff in your templates, um, but it will automatically load types based on their path instead of 
instead of looking in a global. So um, <coughs> this is what Ember CLI gives you. Um, this is this is this is the the basically the the commands that you have. Um, so like I said, you should be able to um, you know get started quickly. So we have an init command and a new command. Um, you should be able to have a preview server. So we have a serve command that fires up a server and watches as your watches files change as you're building and um, re rebuilds for you. Um, and then we have a build command that will that will build to like a dist folder, for example, um, with with your concatenated out output. Um, so for those who aren't familiar, has has have, have all of you used ESX modules yet, or are some of you still not familiar with that? Cool, good. Um, so this is a this is a um, kind of a Node looking file. So this is a common JS syntax. I just want to show real quick what um, ESX modules look like. So when I get into it, you kind of understand what's going on. So if I was going to convert this into ESX modules, instead of saying um, blah equals require Diddy, I would say import blah from Diddy. And then instead of saying module.exports, I would just say export, oops, export default do. Make sense? The default means that um, when I import it, um, whatever symbol I give to import it into, is it'll just get assigned to that symbol. Um, there's a, there's, you'll see in the next example um, an alternative to that. Um, where you might want to require a symbol, fr an export, an explicitly exported symbol. Um, so, like in this case, denotify on RSVP. So I would say like import, and then I put in curly braces the the name of the symbol that I want to import. So denotify, denotify from RSVP. And so and then I would have a um, then I w then I can do like import. Um, this, I can do the same thing here, import read file from fs, and then here I would just say read file equals denotify read file. So, um, so you can import symbols that are explicitly exported as well. And then if I want to explicitly export that symbol, I, would, I could just say export read blah like that. And so then when you import, you have to import read blah. So there's just two different ways of, of importing and exporting. Does that make sense? Um, oh, this one's already changed. Um, so this is, a, this is a slightly bigger example that imports from um, two different files that are different languages and then exports another object. Just give one more example of what that looks like. So let's actually get started and create an app. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of work with the familiar to-do MVC example. And um, so the first thing that we're going to do is run Ember new. There's actually two ways to start an app in Ember CLI. You can Ember init or you can Ember new. Um, Ember new works like Rails new, where you, you would say like Ember new and then the to-dos is the name. It'll create the folder for you and generate everything inside the folder and then UCD into it after it's done. Um, and then there's a... Um, init style that follows more of the Yeoman um, style, where you create the folder, CD in, and then init, and then run Ember init with, with or without a name, and it'll um, and then it'll create everything in the current folder. Since we kind of figured, since there's kind of two different styles in the in the different communities, we would support both. Um, so we're going to run Ember new to dos, and it's going to create everything that we need. Um, so <coughs> we got um, an app folder with um, with a default style sheet, some templates, um, routes, all that kind of stuff, and then we're um, then it's going to go ahead and npm install for us and get all the dependencies set up. Notice we also got bower.json, a dot bowerrc. Got so it's, so it's setting us up for bower as well, out of the box, and it's going to include like things like Ember and Ember Data, all the dependencies we need through Bower. And so of course... I've got to do that to my NPM. Huh? So I've got to do that to my NPM instead of like spitting out a million 
<laughs> What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's actually re fairly recent that that changed because it used to not, it used to be different. It used to spit everything out. All right, so, and now we have an app running, and if we, if we go and look in the inspector, um, you can actually see, like, here's our app.js. Here's our router. Notice this is all um, AMD syntax. Here's our um, index route. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Let me... Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, notice there's uh, it actually has source maps built in. So what we're actually what we're actually loading here is a concatenated version, um, but it has because it has source maps built in, it uh, the browser knows how to split everything out into separate files. And then here's our here's our application template that got rendered in here. So we got started up with a with a uh, with an app ready to go, um, and. Here's our router. Can everyone see that okay? Um, so remember that in here, we had the AMD syntax. And here's our ES6 module syntax. So it's getting compiled on the fly and not something we really have to mess with. Um, so there's our routes. Um, so for the for the to do's app that we're going to be working on, that was the that was the router. We have um, we're using the fixture adapter, so we have um, we have an uh, app adapters application .js is a ds .fixture adapter, um, and then we have a to do model that's going to have a title and an is completed and then some fixtures, and then we export default to do. Every single file is going to look very similar with the export default at the bottom, or just export default and something, some, you know, ember dot something dot extend. For, so here's our here's our first uh, our to do's route. So we're gonna you know export default ember dot route dot extend, and then inside it looks just like any other route does. So we have a model callback. We return the we return the to do's. And then here's our template. Um, so this is this is not Emberified yet. Um, that's we're, we'll do that as we go. But um, this so this is in app templates to do's dot hbs. So all our templates are going to be under app templates. And then now we don't have it running yet. So that's um. <coughs> That's kind of how, how everything's structured and how everything is set up. So now let's look at the server. Um, so the server is going to going to watch for changes for us. Um, it's going to handle live reloading and it's going to handle proxying. We'll look at how it does all of those here. All right. So here's our here's our to dos right now. But like I said, this is not. Emberified yet, so it's just using the examples that it came with. So let's go ahead and throw uh, an iterator around this because we already have our route that's already finding to dos for us. So we can just do our each here, and then we'll do our checkbox. that not live reload are you kidding me <laughs> is it gonna make a fool out of me now it worked but for some reason the live reload didn't work I'm not sure why um, 
but dang it, that ruins that part of the demo. But <laughs> you can see it says live reload server is running. Um, not exactly sure why it didn't it didn't want to live reload that time, but um, but it does have live reload built in. Um, so it should refresh when you make changes. Maybe it's not watching the template. Let me try jumping into the route real quick and see what happens there. Hmm. I have no idea, but... Hmm? Should be. Yeah, I don't know. It should, it should say something down here that, you know, file changed, rebuilding. Oh, well. But anyway, um, yeah. So it has the live. It does. It does. It did do the rebuild though. You you saw the the, the template updated, and we have the we actually have uh, the fixture content now instead of the instead of the examples. So that's what really matters. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the. Uh, That's the server. What's this thing doing? I think this happened to me earlier. Any questions so far? <laughs> <laughs> What's being used to generate the AMD style modules from the ES6 module syntax? Is that um, so we're using the ES6 module transpiler from uh, Square. Um, yeah, it's it's a nice little, handy little tool for that. Yeah. Cool. And then all the building is being handled by Broccoli, which is a which is a build tool. Um, that's something that I prop I didn't actually put into the script that I should have is showing the uh, the Broccoli file, but maybe we can take a look at that whenever this decides to not be locked up anymore. I don't know what happened there. Go away. Wow, that didn't even do it. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Where was I? Sorry, I gotta find my spot again now. That was... Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ember, yeah, we're on four. Okay, cool. So this shouldn't be too bad now. Um, so that's that was like the basic, you know, just basic if you want to have an app that's just client side. But if you want to have something that's server side, um, you know, like you, like somebody asked about earlier, you know, if you want a, if you want a server side app um, and you want to talk to the API and stuff, um, we're gonna do. You know, let's do this. Let me use my. Little testing pattern here. Perfect. It's already set up. All right. Go away. All right. So we're going to create a Rails app. Um, <coughs> and hey, what's up? And so we're, we're actually going to create a Rails API app. Um, and we're going to call it To Do Server. Yes, and then we'll generate um, we'll generate a to do scaffold with a title and is completed, and then we're going to include um, active model serializers, which makes integ integrating Ember data with Rails way the heck easier. Uh, if you weren't recording right now. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. 
So that one had it installed, and now we're going to generate our to-do serializer. And then we'll create a route for um, slash API. So one thing with, the, um, with Ember CLI, the proxying um, works way better when, it's, when the API is nested under some sort of namespace. So um, slash API works fine for that. Um, then we can just say resources to do's. And now we get our Rails server fire up here. And then um, we can curl it. Whoa, why did that go away? Well, <laughs> um, We can curl it. <laughs> and so you see we get we get the JSON back that we're expecting. So that is working. So now we just need to change our Ember adapter to use the active model adapter. And we have to tell it about our namespace. Don't start it with slash, that's bad. <laughs> and then we run Ember server, but this time we give it the proxy port equals 3000 and proxy host equals lo localhost options. And so with our Rails server running, when we load up our Ember server now and come back over to the app and refresh, you see we actually get, um, <coughs> we actually get our data from the server now instead of from the client. Um, and if we look at our requests, if we look at our um, network tab here, um, we should see a filter down to XHR here. We're actually getting the JSON response back from the rail server. So um, that is, that's all I had automated, but I had a couple other things I wanted to show. Um, but first, uh, what question, uh, so, so I want to show the actual like build command and the folder that the, the, the build products that get generated and then deploying to a server. Um, but before I do that, um, what questions do you guys have on you so far? nesting the API is going to make it easier. How so? What's the... Yeah, I honestly don't know. I just learned that about an hour ago. <laughs> um, honestly, I, uh, I I thought that I thought that I, I originally had to do's the to do's API at the root. I think that um, it might be the middleware prox the middleware that we're using the proxy middleware that we're using um, might only be forwarding the request if it's at a if it's at a path you know subpath. Yeah, it needs to know how it's going to forward the it's <coughs> going to proxy it right and it's going to look at some aspect. Yeah, but I mean, we're not telling it to look at slash API, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's what's actually causing that. I need to look. I need to look at the code for the middleware and find out. Maybe we need to write. Maybe we need to make our own middleware. <laughs> I don't know, but but yeah, it, it is that it, that was a question that I thought about was like, well, what happens? Like, how do you know if you need to forward or if you need to stay? Like, does it forward and then if that fails, then it moves on, or like I don't know exactly how it works. I need to look at the code to figure that out. Chains those together, right? Mm -hmm. that, um, our our builds have that uh, NPM middleware uh, for Express, and it chains them together. And the yeah. middleware takes a third argument, which is like a promise. And if you can't um, route it yourself, you can't proxy it yourself. You can just call the promise, and it'll chain it all through. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, but I'm not sure why it why it went to that path there. But when I did it just slash to dos, it always it just kept falling through to Ember. To the to the Ember app, so yeah. What's the difference between Broccoli Ember App Kit and Ember CLI? Okay, um, so Ember CLI uh, Ember CLI is a replacement for Ember App Kit. So Ember App Kit was an experiment um, built. It was built all on Grunt. Um, even all the build tasks, everything was all Grunt, and um, it was it was an experiment to see like. How can we make an Ember app that is that is um, very file 
driven instead of you know global driven and um the grunt did not work well as a build tool because it's just slow it's not meant for that it's meant to be a task runner um broccoli is a build tool so broccoli is broccoli is actually um what we're delegating to when you run ember build ember server actually uses middleware from bro uh, broccoli middleware so broccoli has its own middleware built into it and it serves um it serves everything out of um so it actually creates a temp directory and does all the building if we look right now actually we'll we can see let me pop open another tab here um That's the bro that's broccoli. <laughs> um, it's ugly. We should you should never have to look at it. Um, it's just it's just a bunch of you know this is this is your entire build workflow. I mean you can see we've got a concatenate you know um, that has an ES6 concatenator that does the transpiling and concatenating. Um, these are all broccoli plugins that it's running against. I mean, I remember doing that before. I think it was before you implemented the <coughs> proxy thing. There was like a stub versus like proxy options. Do we have that? That's a, actually a really good question. I forgot about that. That was an Ember app kit. Yeah. I don't think we have that in here. Is this versus API methods and stuff? I think there was like another. Yeah. The, the, the this is just like left over from Ember app kit. Okay. Because we kind of, when we started this, we kind of pulled in the, um, we just pulled in the Ember app kit setup. <laughs> and. We actually started building this on with Grunt because I was getting frustrated waiting for waiting for them to get started on it. And I said, I said, I asked, why don't we just build this on Grunt for now, and then we'll pull in Broccoli when it's ready. So there's still a few things left over from Ember App Kit in here that we haven't taken out yet. Apparently, that's one of them. Um, but no, there's nothing in here about um, the proxy path. So I will definitely ask about that. And and figure that out. Are you using broccoli in production in any way? Are you? Um, no, because we don't need to. Once w once we've built, the broccoli's not the. the no, yeah. yeah. I mean, are you actually building? Like, are you actually oh. building your app, like assets for any larger applications or anything that you're using? So the 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 app that we have, I'm still in the middle of of converting it. The the one big app that we have that's it was Ember App Kit Rails, and I've I've got it. I actually have it converted and running as of a two week two weeks ago. No, three weeks ago. I I worked on it at EmberConf, <laughs> so it was like three weeks ago version of um of Ember CLI. So I need to update it too because Broccoli's changed a little bit. You know, all this stuff is moving really fast. <laughs> um. So, but I can show that real quick since um since you guys asked about it anyway. Um, let's see. So this is the root folder, um, and we have a so we have a client folder and a server folder. Um, this is it's one repo right now, um, but the client server has the Ember CLI app in it, and then the server folder has the um, has the Rails app in it. And yeah, you can ignore that public sim link. That was an old attempt before we had proxying. But that's kind of the that's that's kind of the basics of how we're doing it is just two separate folders there. I'm I'm trying to think of it like I would an iOS app. Right? Like it may or may, it doesn't necessarily need to be a completely separate repo, but I would never embed an iOS app inside of a Rails app. <laughs> right? So do you have a, like end to end tests that run with both of them? Do those live on the server app or would um, live in another top of a folder? Yeah, so for the testing um, I have, so I, I do have tests, but I haven't gotten them running yet with Ember CLI. Um, so they're, they're in the client and I'll probably leave them in the client, but they talk to, they do talk to the server. Okay. So the way that I wrote it is, um, we were using Teaspoon in Ember AppKit Rails and, um, Teaspoon gives you, um, hooks that you can use that automatic, that just like Ajax, make Ajax requests under the covers. So, um, so I, I created a hook that would go and create fixtures for me. So my um, in my JavaScript tests, I could say um, go create a project fixture, a product fixture, or go create a um, or go create a card fixture or whatever, and um, 
and it would just go it would just create those for me on the server and then I could start asserting against that data n knowing that it's there but without having to put tons of, like I just I did not like having to have like entire object trees inside of my tests um, it just that to try to stub Ajax requests and stuff it just got really ugly I wouldn't say it was totally custom it wasn't it wasn't hard um, it's basically let's see if I still have it in here I mean it may not be actually it's probably still in the server folder test yeah test helpers um, data fixture I think it was so yeah I have um, a teaspoon hook helper that just actually makes a Ajax request to teaspoon um, hooks and then the hook name. And then the, the hooks the hook stuff feature is built into Teaspoon. Okay, so like where is the data? Like when you're setting up this fixture like Teaspoon, it's not it's it's on the server. Okay. The data's on the server. And I'm I'm letting it make Ajax requests. For these for the acceptance tests. For for the uh, unit tests I'm not, but for acceptance tests I am. Um, because I had some, I had a lot of a lot of just I I, I realized you know, a lot of state based logic right where um, where I might I might in the mid in one test I might I might do three things that change state on the server and trying to trying to stub that logic just didn't make sense to me but for something simple you know if it, for a smaller app it might make more sense to do Ajax stubbing. Um, it really, I, I think that kind of thing just really depends on the size of your app and what you're doing. Does that help? Yeah. I noticed earlier that you had uh, <coughs> pictures next to your model mm -hmm. uh, in one of the classes before you hooked up the proxy server. Mm -hmm. I assume that Ember CLI removes those fixtures when it builds? No. When you do a production build, it ships those fixtures? I think I think right now it would, yeah. Okay, I was yeah. curious if there would be like any way to specify code that was only for debug. Ah, um, That's where I was going. you actually could. Um, so if you go to um, when you generate your app, there's a config directory, and config has an environment.js. Um, I can close this now. So this environment JS has um, these two. So it has if environment is development versus if environment is production. This file will actually get processed. Notice this is a node. This is actually a node file. This will get processed. This, this file won't get included in your app as it exists here. Um, in fact, if we do um, Ember build, this will build the app into the dist folder. Um, uh, assets. Uh, this might this might actually be minified. It is minified. Um, so we'll have to we'll look at the let's fire the server back up and look at it. I believe what we actually end up with is. Um, Where's the log resolver? Nope. I actually don't know where that ends up, but um, basically, what happens is app index.html is what we're um, is what we're building. Is, is this is this is our this is our index.html file that gets built out, right? And what happens is um, it it, it, there's there's this one global called env, and env has um, things like root URL and it has an app property. This app property gets you know its own properties on it. Whatever's inside of this development if statement um, is going to get is going to get included in development. Whatever's inside of production is going to get included in production. So theoretically, you could put your f I think you could probably put your fixtures in here, 
and um, and that would actually get um, probably get output into production. That's actually a really good question. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, yeah. I want to uh, I want to make note of that question because that's good. <laughs> I'm really not sure what it would do. Man, why is this thing locking up on me left and right now? Sorry. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. What is the uh, coffee script support? Oh yeah. So um, so if you want to use preprocessors, they are um, we support. So out of the box, we support um, coffee script, SAS, less stylus, and is that and then handlebars and emblem for templates. Um, so you can. Um, if you so in your um, in your package JSON, if you add so for example, in um, I actually have an app that's using um, SAS. So in my package JSON, I say um, I include broccoli SAS, and then um, and then in my styles folder, I can use like app.scss. And it'll run. It'll see that I included broccoli, broccoli SAS in my dev dependencies, and it'll automatically um, process SAS. Same for CoffeeScript. That's how. That's basically how we do preprocessors. So anything you, if you include, if it's supported and you include it in your dev dependencies, then it'll, then it'll work. Um, it'll just, it'll just work right. Um, there is, there is kind of a, um, there is a little bit of support for, for defining your own. But it's not very well defined yet. Um, but that will be coming eventually to be able to like you know add su add support for any preprocessor. Um, but this is this is actually something I wanted to show you anyway. This is the this is the Brock file. So this is what um, what act Broccoli actually uses to build. Um, right now it is included in the app because we don't know yet what all the configuration points need to be for this. So until we figure that out. Um, we don't want to keep anyone from being able to do what they need to do, so we're just um, letting everyone have complete control over the Brock file if they need it. Um, just be warned that when there are updates, when the Brock file changes, you can rerun Ember init, and it won't it won't like kill other things that you already have. But um, but you will need to like kind of figure out how to merge this on your own. <laughs> we don't have good w you know there's no good way to merge this file if you do have customizations to it. But we've done as much as we can to try to make sure that you don't need to customize it um, too much, unless you have your own, um, unless you have your own third-party stuff that you include. So, like, um, in I thought I had one in this app. I guess not in here. Maybe it's in the other one. Let me take a look real quick. Oops. Yeah, here it is. So like, this is a this is an app. Um, it integrates. So th so this is the one where the ba the front end is Ember, but the back end is Rails. We use Devise for authentication, and so we have things like um, we're using the Ember Device Simple Auth plugin. Um, so um, in the Brock file, um, there's a there's this like legacy files to append array, and so if you want to include something that you don't like if it's already AMD or you, it's not ES6 modules at all, then you want to include it in this array. Um, if it's if it's or and and or you want to make it an ignored module here. So um, I think legacy files to append will um, will add it to the concatenated output. Ignored modules will make it not try to process it as a module. So this is for anything that is already a module or isn't a module at all, 
just any legacy files you want to include. This is for um, anything that is already a module. So these, I think that's the only thing you really need to customize in here, ever. Um, but then, basically, what this file does is it walks through. So, like, it broccoli is based on the on um, this concept of like directory trees. So, um, so you you tell it like grab this grab this tree of files and um, grab these files from it, and then um, run this run this plugin against it. So, in this case, like we um, we grab um, the the app tree and we find index.html. And then we use the broccoli replace plugin to replace env with that with the env file that we created in our config environment.js. Or um, to pre-process um, yeah, to pre-process our templates, you know, we we um, grab our app tree, pass it into a pre-process templates function, and then that will call a couple broccoli plugins against that tree. Um, it has support, Broccoli has support for Bower out of the box, so it will actually, um, it'll actually load, I'm trying to find it here. Um, this one might be too old. It's weird. It's th I just did that like two, two or three weeks ago and it already is too old. <laughs> um, find Bower Trees is a plugin for Broccoli that will, um, you give it, so I think we, I think we gave it the, uh, no, we didn't, okay. Oh yeah, so we give it um, our test tree and our vendor tree, and then we um, add on. We tell it to go look in those trees for any Bower trees, um, and so it will look for anything like under vendor for um, anything that has a Bower.json in it. It'll actually look at the um, at the main, and then um, parse that file and include it in your build. Um, and at the end of this file, basically we, um, oh, this one's old too. <sighs> I've got some updates ahead of me, huh? You, um, at the very end, you just export whatever, like you take, you take the trees that you want. So like, um, in this case, so we, like, we have our, um, let's look at output trees. So our output trees have our index HTML, our application JS, um, anything, just anything out of public, and then our styles. And um, it merges them, uh, merges those trees all together into one big tree, and then exports it. And then what we're left with is this under our, under our, our dist folder. And that's basically how Broccoli works. Does that make sense? Other questions? Nothing? I guess I'm kind of wondering yeah. more about combining the two applications. Like, so when you deploy, you're just going, like, like in this case, you have a Rails app and the Ember app. You're going to, like, it's part of the process. The public directory. Uh, my plan there, so, um, so this is another thing that it depends on the app. Um, so I have I have one app that I built. Um, that's a uh, wait. There it is. So this is an app I built that um, actually talks to the GitHub API, and so I can do like um, I can put in a. I think I can right. Or is it, um, well, it's supposed to talk to GitHub API, but it's, a, it's an app that, it's an app that, um, that actually communicates with GitHub. It doesn't have a server side component to it. So I put it, I actually put it, deployed it to five apps, which is like a, a Heroku like provider for, um, for static apps. Um, for the other one, the one that has the Rails component to it, I think my plan for that is actually to deploy them as two separate sites. Um, so I'll deploy one as maybe like an API, and or, um, or they might be on the same server name, but with different um, different paths. It's probably what I'll actually end up doing. So that way I don't have to deal with cores. I haven't I haven't actually decided that part yet. 
and kind of did the, the point of deploying that one. But um, we're using Nginx on our on our servers, which can which has awesome handling for static files. So I'll probably just serve that by its, the Ember app by itself, um, and just have like a separate deploy process for the Ember app and a separate deploy process for the um, for the Rails app. I think I want to try to treat them as two separate apps, basically. So do you guys want to see deploying with uh, with five apps? Is that interesting at all? I can, sh I can show you what I think and deploy this uh, to do's to it. And I thought it was kind of I thought it was kind of neat. Really? So um, you can create a new app pretty easily. Um, so we'll just call this like um, number CLI to do's. And it, it works very, very similarly to, to uh, Heroku. I'm going to use an actual complete version of it. Um, the difference, the difference is one of the the one downside to deploying like this is that you actually have to commit the dist folder. Um, it's a small a small sacrifice, I guess. But um, so I'm going to go ahead and add this as a submodule, or no, I'm going to add it as a remote. That's right. Why was I going to try to add it as a submodule? I don't know. So we added as a remote. And um, yeah, and then we can use git subtree push, which if you haven't seen it before, it lets you specify a, a separate folder in your repo to push as the root. So in this case, we could say dist, except that it's going to say dist doesn't exist because we have we actually haven't it's not in our repo yet. Um, Actually, oh, it really doesn't exist. <laughs> I haven't run Ember Build in here yet. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, no new revisions were found because there's nothing to push yet. So now we have to go into our git ignore, take dist out. Now we should be able to push. And now we have a build. Or at least it's finishing. There we go. Now we have a build. And I believe there's a URL for it somewhere in here. There it is. And there we go. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> it works. Of course, it doesn't save anything because it's still using fixtures. But, um, but yeah. So you can basically with Ember CLI, you can do the entire workflow from, you know, from spinning it up to deploying, and building all of it. Yeah, I think that's about. Is there is there an easy way to hook into like the Rails precompile hooks to have Rails build? Um, I mean, I know you the, can do it manually. <laughs> yeah, the short answer is no, because Rails doesn't give you that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's not very hard to create your own precompiled task. 
and have it do whatever you want. Um, that's what that's what we do in half pipe to do um, to use grunt for building instead of the asset pipeline. Um, but um, but no, Rails doesn't really give you many hooks. It's one of the reasons why um, I've stopped using the asset pipeline. It's because there's there's really no there's no easy way to hook into it. It's it's very kind of strange. But um, I know that there is some there is some talk about better broccoli integration with Rails and having like rack middleware that can serve that can serve out of broccoli and stuff like that. So I think maybe when some of that stuff comes comes along, um, that kind of integration will be easier. Um, I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to not think of not think in a rail specific way yet. Um, so I want I want to make sure Ember CLI. You know, we want to make sure Ember CLI is always going to be useful for um, you know anybody who needs to integrate with any server side. Um, just so happens that Rails is one of the most common ones. So. <laughs> um, but I know I know there's I know people are working on it. Yeah. Can I uh, just require in the CLI into another node module and call anything directly to the API expose that one? Um it's not documented, um, but I would say you could try. <laughs> um, it might work, but um, but don't be angry if um, if you try and then in the next release everything changes because that that API is not pu really public right now. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to that point. It's, I mean, literally, there was actually a commit. Like I haven't really had mu had a whole lot of time to work on it in the, in the past couple of weeks, and then there was a commit that was like, "Oh, restructure the entire app." I'm like, "Oh, great!" <laughs> <laughs> now I have to figure out how all the code that I wrote changed. <laughs> so it's 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 going undergoing a lot of refactoring, trying to get tests around it. This stuff is just like this is the stuff that's notoriously hard to test because, I mean, it's all you know you want to try to not write tests that test the file system. But that's all we have. That's all we're doing in this. There's no, I mean, there's really very little logic in the in the library itself. So um, our focus has really been trying to get a good stable um, test suite and, um, you know, a good looking code, easy to read and follow code and stuff like that right now before we get to making that API public and, all, and making it fully extensible and stuff like that. Um, Oh, one of one of the, another thing I wanted to mention. I forgot to put in my slides. Um, another one of the plans for Ember CLI is to have. Uh, I mentioned that it should that it should sub you'll let you subscribe to your release channel and and update for you. Um, one of our plans is to eventually have it um, like when you run Ember build, for example, it might prompt you like, oh, there's a new beta release. Do you want to update now or? And if not, then you can run Ember update later, and it'll just download and pull in the latest Ember for you, and you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about you know it'll automatically update. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so the testing defaults on this are key yeah. unit. Does it run on the command line? Does it use another runner? Oh yeah. Um, so right now, um, I actually think that this has the tests in it already. Let's see. Oops, not 3,000. The default port is 4,200, by the way, if you can't see that. So right now, um, at the moment, you can only, it, it only has QUnit through the browser. Um, we will be implementing fairly soon a, um, a wrapper, a, a command line wrapper, so you can say Ember test and, and run them headlessly. Um, I think we're going to use Testum for it. Um, for now, but we want to make that adaptable in the future. Um, along with, um, I don't know if you've been following the Ember testing stuff that's been coming out recently, but um, the plan is eventually to be able to have um, to have separate ad different adapters for different test frameworks too, so that you could use Mocha or um, whatever suits you. But um, so like right now, we're just kind of we're proving out the testing 
story with QUnit, and then that'll change. You know, that'll be something that can be adapted in the future as well. So, but right now you can um, you can at least you know, write your tests using. I mean, it includes all uh, includes uh, Ember QUnit, which is the um, which has all the wrappers for um, for like components and controllers and routes to uh, to stub out the container. Um, and uh, yeah, does that answer your question? If I have like an Ember CLI project uh -huh. running, and then a new version of Ember CLI comes out, I can go and just do like a, you know, in, npm update or whatever on Ember CLI, mm -hmm. and then I just Ember init. Yeah, you can run Ember init again, and then um, it'll it might pull in like a couple of a couple of like old file like like app.css if you're using SAS, so you might have to like get reset after that. Um, but it it should it should it won't touch anything that's that is already there. It'll it'll prompt you if you want to overwrite things that like it might prompt you about um, router.js, which obviously you don't want to overwrite. Um, but yeah, you can run Ember init and it'll and it'll um, do it should do the right thing. So if you guys um, if you guys do use it and you have you know thoughts or anything, um, this is the GitHub repo. Feel free to you know open issues or um, you know ping ping me or Stefan or anyone on Twitter and um, with your thoughts and we're we're still trying to you know get feedback on this and see how people are using it. Speaking of yeah. How's, how's the tool going that does like the I can't remember the name of it, but the thing that like gives you guys information about usage. Oh yeah, um, the analytics stuff. Um, so. One of the guys who's been contributing to this is actually writing um, his own library called Leak, I think because of broccoli. Um, and it's basically so. The, so the tool, the the library we're using right now is called um, is called uh, oh man, I don't even remember. Um, Insight, and um, it was a tool built for Yeoman, and. Um, I was really, really excited to get it in, and um, I was actually I I was doing that like my entire flight out to Portland for EmberConf, <laughs> and uh, and I was very disappointed by it. <laughs> I mean, it was it was good. It, it got us it got us some really basic. It's getting us some really basic analytics, so we can actually um, let's see. Really, I. Uh, I know. <laughs> Where's my account? Good idea. <laughs> I finally got off Google for my email, but it's still there for. There's no getting. Yeah. Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> do I do, where do I do that? You just go to okay. Okay, I see. There it is. Oops. Did I just uncheck it? Yes, I did. All right. There it is. It's just slow. Probably. It's Angular. <laughs> is it actually? I, well, there, that setting page is all a web app, so there's yeah, I guess that would make sense. <laughs> uh, where's my account? Yeah, there it is. Cannot fill. Right. Whatever. I'll just wait. G it. What? That's it. Yeah. There we go. All right. There it is. So here's our here's our usage. 
in case anyone's interested. I haven't even looked at this in a couple weeks, so this could be interesting. Um, so we actually we actually are, can track um, all we all we get right now is like what commands are being run. You know, we get no actual information on anybody. We don't even get right now. We don't even get OS information. So there's there's nothing in it, it and it prompts you when you first run for whether or not you want to allow allow it, and then it shuts up from then on out. But um, yeah, so so to answer your question, um, it's it it was it was a little disappointing at how how simple it was and how hard it was to get it to like to customize it. So one of the guys who's been contributing to um, Ember CLI is writing a, is rewriting it um, so that so that we can actually like because um, there's like there's all kinds of stuff in Google Analytics I never knew about like there's timing APIs so you can so you can track performance there's um, exception APIs um, so we're we're getting a library where we can do all that we can so we can track errors we can track timings we can. Into this, then you're pushing events up to Google Analytics mm -hmm. and tracking it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's here it is, screens. Yeah, here you go. In fact, these are probably mine <laughs> right now. If we go, I think behavior, screens. Yeah, here it is. Wow. When is this? Jeez. Is this, is this just today? There's no way. No, this has to be like all month or something. Yeah, it's not like the same day this uh, this just says. That's the day. That's the like points. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way. There's just no way that it's that used yet. So anyway, this gives you an idea. This is an idea of how how much has been used. It's kind of cool, but yeah. Does that, did that answer your question? Sorry. Yeah, I was Yeah, not a ton yet, um, but we're working on it. We're getting more. What else? Did this answer your questions? You guys feel a little more, feel like you could give it a try and... Really? We haven't gotten much, we haven't, the, the, we haven't done much more since then. It seemed like, it seemed like you were kind of just trying to get things together. I did it, especially with Broccoli. We were just kind of starting to smooth out. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely know the proxy not being faster. Yeah, I, I did that on my way back. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I I decided that I decided during EmberConf that I wanted to start converting that one app over. I was like, how am I going to integrate with this with Rails? And so, I kind of forced myself. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for coming out. Yeah, thanks Appreciate it. You're welcome.